and welcome to Estuary Elim Church Online. May the grace and wisdom of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you as we delve into the profound wisdom of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 6. Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon, for you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. A prayer to begin. Heavenly Father, we come before you with open hearts, seeking your guidance and understanding as we explore the concept of sowing seeds of faith. Open our spiritual eyes to see the depth of this wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This weekend in our churches, we are celebrating harvest. And in our sermon today, we embark on a journey into the heart of faith. A journey exemplified by the act of sowing seeds. Just as a diligent farmer rises early to sow, we too are called to plant seeds of faith in our hearts and in the hearts of others. Morning in this verse symbolises the beginning of our spiritual journey, a time of new beginnings. Before we delve deeper, let me share a quote from the great preacher D.L. Moody. Faith makes all things possible. Love makes all things easy. The act of sowing. Let's focus on the first part of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 6. Plant your seed in the morning. Imagine a diligent farmer rising early, sowing seeds in the fertile soil. This act reflects our role as believers, sowing seeds of faith in our hearts and in the hearts of others. Morning symbolises the beginning of our journey of faith, a time when the soil of our hearts is most receptive. The famous preacher Charles Spurgeon once said, Begin as you mean to go on, and go on as you began. Our journey of faith starts with the deliberate act of sowing, a decision to trust and follow Christ. Consider Mark chapter 4 verses 26 and 27. The kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. Mark chapter 4 verses 26 and 27 is a parable that Jesus shared with his disciples. This parable is often referred to as the parable of the growing seed. In this parable, Jesus talks about a farmer sowing seeds to illustrate a profound spiritual truth about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, Jesus often used parables to explain the nature of the kingdom of God. And in this context, the kingdom of God refers to God's rule and reign in the hearts of people the spiritual realm where God's will is done. It's not a physical kingdom, it's a spiritual one. The farmer scattering seed. The farmer, he represents anyone who shares the message of the kingdom of God. Preachers, evangelists or believers who spread the gospel. The seed they scatter represents the message of the kingdom, the gospel of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. The seeds sprouting and growing. The remarkable aspect of this parable is that the farmer scatters the seed and even though he may not fully understand the process, the seed sprouts and grows. This illustrates the mysterious and powerful work of God in people's hearts when they hear and receive the gospel. The growth is not solely dependent on human efforts, but on God's divine influence. And the reference to night and day highlights that this growth is continuous and ongoing. It's not limited to certain times or conditions. It is a constant process. The farmer's lack of understanding. The farmer, despite his efforts, doesn't comprehend fully how the seed grows. In the same way, in the spiritual realm, humans cannot fully comprehend or control how God's word transforms a person's heart. It's a work of God's grace. It's the power of God at work. Jesus uses this parable to teach that the kingdom of God 
is initiated by the spreading of the gospel message. But the transformation that occurs in a person's heart is ultimately a divine and mysterious process. This emphasizes the importance of sharing the gospel and trusting in God's power to bring about spiritual growth and transformation in individuals. Perseverance in labor. Let's turn our attention to the second part of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 6 and keep busy all afternoon. Picture the same farmer toiling tirelessly throughout the day tending to the crops. In the same way in our own spiritual lives we must persist in our faith constantly and consistently nurturing and growing through prayer and study and service for our Lord. The missionary Hudson Taylor once remarked, I have found that there are three stages in every great work of God. First, it is impossible. Then it is difficult. Then it is done. Just as a farmer doesn't stop laboring in the field, we must continue to cultivate our faith even when faced with challenges. Consider Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 and 7. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you are taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. These verses offer valuable guidance for Christians on how to live lives rooted in Christ. Here's an explanation. Let's widen it out a bit more. Accepting Christ Jesus as Lord. These verses begin by emphasizing the pivotal moment when people accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's that initial step of faith where a person acknowledges Christ as Lord and the need for him as saviour and salvation through him. Then we continue to follow him. This passage doesn't stop at accepting Jesus, but it encourages believers to continue following him. It's not a one-time decision, but an ongoing commitment to live in obedience to Christ and Christ's teachings, to model our lives after his own example. Let your roots grow down into him. The imagery here of roots growing down into Christ illustrates the need for deep, strong spiritual foundations. Just as a tree's roots provide stability and nourishment, Christians are encouraged to anchor themselves firmly in their relationship with Christ. And this involves deepening our understanding of his word spending time in prayer and being in communion with him. Let your lives be built on him. Building our lives on Christ means that every aspect of our life should be founded on his principles and values. It's about making decisions, setting priorities and conducting ourselves in ways that align with the teachings and character of Jesus. Then faith that grow strong in truth. When believers are rooted in Christ and their lives are built upon him, their faith grows stronger. They become more grounded in the truth of the gospel and the teachings of Jesus, making us less susceptible to doubt or spiritual wavering. Then comes overflowing with thankfulness. A life rooted in Christ, built upon him, leads to a deep sense of gratitude. Christians recognize the immense gift of salvation, the transformative power of Christ in our lives, resulting in an overflow of thankfulness and praise. Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 and 7 encourage us not only to accept Jesus, but also to continue following him, to deepen our roots in him, to build our lives on his teaching, to strengthen our faith, to cultivate a spirit of gratitude. These verses highlight the importance of an ongoing, vibrant relationship with Christ in the life of a Christian. Embracing uncertainty. 
Now, let's consider the last part of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. For you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. Consider a gardener who doesn't know which seed will flourish, but still plants them all. In the same way, we may not always see the immediate results of our faith efforts, but God can bring blessings from unexpected places. Corrie ten Boom once said, When a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You sit still and trust the driver. Embracing uncertainty in our faith journey means trusting God's plan even when we can't see the outcome. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 reminds us, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. This is a well-known and often quoted verse from the New Testament. It provides a message of hope and reassurance for Christians facing various challenges and difficulties in life. It reminds us of God's sovereignty. This verse begins with the affirmation that we know. It's a statement of confidence, a statement of certainty. Christians are assured that God is in control of all circumstances and events in this world. He is sovereign. That means he is the ultimate authority, the power over everything that happens. Everything works together. This verse goes on to declare that God causes everything to work together. That means that even in the midst of life's challenges, trials and seemingly random events, God is orchestrating a divine plan. Nothing is outside of his ultimate control and purpose. For the good. The remarkable promise of this verse is that all these events, whether good or bad from a human perspective, are working together for the good. It's important to note that this good is not necessarily referring to personal comfort, wealth or earthly success. Instead, it points to God's ultimate purpose of conforming believers to the image of Christ and their eternal well-being. Those who love God. The promise in this verse is specific to a particular group of people. Those who love God. It's directed at believers who have a genuine relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Their love for God and commitment to him are the key factors in this promise. Called according to his purpose. It's not just about loving God. It's about being called according to his purpose. That suggests that God has a specific plan for every believer's life and his actions are aligned with that divine purpose. This purpose is often about conforming believers to be more like Christ, about advancing the kingdom of God. Romans 8.28 offers a profound message of hope and comfort for us. It assures us that no matter what circumstance we may face, God is working in the background to bring about a greater good aligned with his divine purpose. It's also a reminder of God's sovereignty, his love for his children, his commitment to fulfilling his purpose in our lives. This verse has provided so much encouragement to countless believers throughout history, reminding them that they can trust in God's ultimate plan even in the midst of life's challenges. Faithful stewardship. Let's consider Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. This verse from the New Testament from Galatians carries a powerful message of encouragement and perseverance. Do not grow weary. This verse begins with an exhortation, so let's not get tired. It acknowledges that in the Christian journey there can be moments of weakness, discouragement or fatigue. It's a reminder that serving God and doing what is good can be challenging and demanding. 
persist in doing good. Despite the challenges and weariness, the verse encourages believers to persist in doing what is good. This includes acts of kindness, righteousness and living according to God's commands. It emphasises the importance of maintaining our commitment to living a life of faith and virtue. Then timing is key. This verse highlights the significance of timing with a phrase, at just the right time. This indicates that God's blessings and rewards may not always come immediately. Sometimes there's a waiting period and believers need patience and endurance during this time. Reaping a harvest of blessing. The promise in this verse is that if believers do not give up and continue doing good, they will reap a harvest of blessing. This suggests that God rewards faithfulness and perseverance in the long run. And blessings can take various forms, spiritual growth, inner peace, even tangible rewards in life. The importance of persistence. The verse underscores the importance of not giving up, even when the results of our actions may not be immediately visible or when challenges seem overwhelming. It's a call to maintain faith in God's promises and to keep doing what is right regardless of circumstances. This verse from Galatians serves as a source of encouragement for believers. It reminds us to persevere in doing good, even when we face challenges or tiredness or weariness. The promise of a harvest of blessings at the right time is a reminder that God sees our efforts and is faithful towards us. This verse has been a source of motivation for countless Christians urging them to remain steadfast in their commitment to living a life of faith and righteousness. Think about a gardener's joy when the harvest comes. In the same way, our faithfulness in sowing spiritual seeds will lead to a harvest of blessings in due time if we persevere in doing what God says is good. The great Christian reformer Martin Luther once stated, even if I knew that tomorrow the world would go to pieces, I would still plant my apple tree. Faithful stewardship means planting seeds of faith, even in challenging times, trusting that God's promises will come to fruition. Psalm 126 verses 5 and 6. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed but they sing as they return with the harvest. This passage from the book of Psalms in the Old Testament is short but powerful and it also carries a message of hope and encouragement. Planting in tears. This passage begins by acknowledging that there are times of sorrow and hardship in life. The metaphor used here is that of planting seeds with tears. This imagery represents the difficulties and challenges we often face when sowing the seeds of our efforts and actions. Life can be tough and there are moments when we experience sorrow and struggle. Harvest with shouts of joy. Despite the initial tears and difficulties, the passage provides a message of hope and optimism. It assures us that those who persevere and continue to plant seeds even in challenging times, will eventually reap a bountiful harvest. The harvest is associated with shouts of joy, indicating that the outcome will be one of the greatest happiness and celebration. There's a contrast here. A contrast between weeping during planting and singing during harvest. And that contrast is significant. It reflects the cyclical nature of life, where difficulties are followed by moments of joy and abundance. It emphasises the idea that our trials and struggles are not the end of the story. They are part of a larger journey, leading to better times. And there's a message of encouragement here. A message of encouragement to those who are going through challenging times. 
It reminds us that our tears and our efforts are not in vain. Just as a farmer's hard work in planting eventually leads to a bountiful harvest, so too can our perseverance through difficult circumstances result in blessings and joy in the future. Spiritual Application While this passage can be applied to various aspects of life, it also carries spiritual significance. It encourages believers to remain faithful and steadfast in their relationship with God, even during trials and hardship. It reminds us that our faith and obedience will ultimately lead to spiritual blessings and joy. This verse is a message of hope and endurance. It reminds us that God is able to lead us through those difficult times and that we can again experience joy and abundance. It's a reminder that God can turn our tears into shouts of joy and that there is hope on the horizon, especially for those who are faithful and steadfast in their journey of faith. In conclusion, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 6 teaches us how to sow seeds of faith diligently, to persevere in our spiritual labour and to trust in God's timing for the harvest. Even in uncertainty, we can be faithful stewards, knowing that God will bring forth blessings from our efforts. A brief word of prayer as we close. Heavenly Father, help us to be diligent sowers of faith, to work tirelessly in nurturing our relationship with you and sharing your love with others. May we trust in your timing and persevere in doing good knowing that the harvest of blessing awaits. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look around you. There's so much work to do. This world is in no condition for us to simply sit back and watch. There is a tangible, desperate need for Jesus. A glimpse of hope in the midst of hopelessness. Jesus experienced this. He saw it firsthand. The need broke his heart and filled him with compassion. He turned to his disciples and said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. This alone should stir our hearts. It's a calling, a calling to make a difference, to share the truth of the gospel, to be a light in the darkness, to be the church. It's time for us to look beyond ourselves to turn our focus to the field, to answer the call and passionately share the love of Jesus. This is our mandate. This is our mission. Are you ready to do the work? I hope you've been inspired and encouraged by what you've heard today. May I encourage you to sow seeds of faith in many lives by sharing the word of God and your testimony of God's faithfulness in your own life. Please click on the like, subscribe and notify buttons before you go. And remember, you can connect with us at our website, estuaryelim.church, or you can find us on Facebook. A reminder too that you can also listen to our audio recordings of the sermons and their thoughts on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music and Spotify. Thank you so much for watching this video. May God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. Hope to see you again soon. God bless and bye for now.